Hello and welcome to Navigating Nursing. I am your host, Laura Whitehead, a registered adult nurse, a critical care nurse, qualified lecturer and fellow of the Higher Education Academy. I would like to welcome Gareth Foster, who is a lecturer in the Clinical Skills Department at Middlesex University and is also an Emergency Department Advanced Nurse Practitioner and Nurse. Um, welcome and thank you so much for joining me today, Gareth. First of all, I want to take you back to the beginning. You trained in 2007 at Bedfordshire University. What made you decide that particular university? So when I trained actually back in from 2004 to 2007, it was classified as Luton University um, and then it kind of got rebranded. I think towards the last part of my in my year um, where it became Bedfordshire University and it was a combination of things really um, I wanted to move away <laughs> from, <laughs> from home and have a bit of a university experience um, so that was uh, one option and uh, it received pretty good ratings at the time that I studied it was one of the the kind of you know approved universities for nursing degrees um, and the other thing as well is it, it had quite interesting hospitals that the placements were allocated to so it was High Wycombe and Stoke Mandeville that were kind of busy hospitals in, in Buckinghamshire, um, had lots of variety, but also had lots of specialist uh, aspects to them as well. So um, there was a, a Burns unit at Stoke Mandeville, for example. Um, they had uh, kind of good established care with, with emergency things like ITU, A&E, et cetera. So, so it was general interest of, of the area, the hospitals, and also just being quite young and deciding to move away from home and have a bit of a uni experience so I think that was mine where can I get the train to <laughs> yeah, absolutely yeah yeah um, so did you always know that you wanted to work in the emergency department and why why did, why was that something that you were drawn to as a career yeah so it basically came in my second year of being a student so I did uh, a eight week placement. So placements were very different when I kind of studied. Um, so we had a, a nice eight week placement block in uh, High Wycombe Accident Emergency. And I just really loved it. I enjoyed it. I loved the pace of it, the variety. Um, <clears throat> I had a really, really good uh, mentor at the time um, who supported me. And I just felt like there was lots and lots to learn. <clears throat> so then uh, went into the final year and again, different programs, different time when we kind of studied, we were able to have a, um, select our final kind of management placement, which was a 12 week placement. And I opted to go back into A&E again um, and was granted it luckily. And basically, yeah, yeah. And, and never, never looked back really. And I knew at that stage in my kind of nursing uh, student nursing um, kind of program I that's what I wanted to do so I was really really pushing to to go back there because I, it was where I wanted to head immediately after qualifying so um so I did guess you it know the, the experience yeah and did you know that when you were on placement there that were you did, were they accepting newly qualified so kind of that can be quite a difficult thing of people really struggle to find jobs say in the speciality so intensive care critical care units HDUs a and &E. I think it's saying that lots of student nurses know they want to go into that area don't they but then it's actually finding a trust or a particular unit that will take them being newly qualified yeah absolutely um I, I was fortunate at the time that there were departments that didn't and then there, there were departments that did um and <clears throat> although I liked the hospitals that I worked at I uh because of life reasons I decided that I would move up to uh, North London to start my career so when I qualified um I was looking in kind of like the North London area at hospitals that would um take newly qualifieds um and started my career at Chase Farm Accident Emergency um which no longer exists because um, of amalgamations and changes within our NHS service. So, but that's where that's where I started, and they were really, really good. They had a really good structure there for supporting newly qualified. Um, they they obviously had preferences around having experience as a student was beneficial, but it, it wasn't even even when I qualified, it wasn't necessary. Um, and 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 I know from from my career and doing lots of recruitment and interviewing as a qualified nurse, um, you know, later down the line that, yes, it's useful, um, but it's not always a necessity. You you know, you don't have to have prior experience um, if you've you've got experience as a student in acute areas. Sometimes that's all you really require to, to get going in, in emergency departments. Especially so. those transferable skills. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I think Absolutely. we clump together, don't we? 
uh, intense kind of level two, level three areas and, and A&Es as there are skills that you don't do anywhere else you know they're really seen as the preferable and every student will hope lots of students will request them won't they yeah. and unfortunately now with with numbers not being able to request placements um i requested a hdu and mine was the same and that that led to my first job um so it can really have an impact but important to note that actually the skills that you learn in other acute areas are very applicable and really important to to mention those in your applications definitely yeah yeah in your and, and areas as well such as kind of medical assessment units now function so similarly to how so similarly of, of a and e and and um and that do so so yeah as you said those those skills that you can acquire in those placements are definitely transferable to to start a career if you're looking to go straight into an area such as a and e or, or the ed so you have worked as about five about seven a pdm and within acting as a, an amp within the emergency department what was your favorite role if you could pick um I, I was also a band six in between the five and seven. I didn't just band six. Uh, sorry, no, I no, no, out, no, no, no. I, did, I, did, uh, <laughs> I wasn't that lucky. Um, so <laughs> I actually, I would say where I learned the most was as a band six, um, and it was so you would qualify as a staff nurse band five in ED, and then that we would when I started, it would be two separate band six roles. So you would be like a 6A and a 6B. So a 6A would be a senior staff nurse and a 6B would be a junior charge nurse. And I would say that that was part of my favourite time in my nursing career was being a junior charge nurse um, because I believe that that was probably the point where I developed the most. Um, I took on a lot of extra responsibility. Um, the responsibility was put on you as well within the department. Um, but equally, you were still at that stage where you were learning from from you know your senior colleagues and 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 had that support mechanism. So that was probably I would say the time that I enjoyed the most within my nursing. Um, my favourite role within my nursing probably was within the practice development nurse role, um, and and that was that cross between being very clinical. Um, and supporting junior nurses um, on the shop floor clinically, making sure that they were developing, uh, using all of your experience and knowledge to, to, you know, feed into the way that they would be providing patient care. But also I had a lot of aspects of, of kind of, um, I would say more administrative tasks as well. So I learned lots about NHS processes. I learned lots about um, kind of, you know, the business side of the NHS. Um, and then it, from that, I was m kind of able to uh, develop roles within education, within the trust. So, so I took a lead on providing uh, kind of in-house courses. Um, so managed to, to get accreditation for an in-house A&E course that I, I was then responsible for running. Um, amazing. So, yeah, so things like that. But I, none of that would have come if I didn't do both aspects of it. I needed to have that clinical knowledge and that experience and, and support, you know, my colleagues on the shop floor. Um, and then obviously looking at the, the kind of, yeah, the business side of, of it. How can we, how can we still develop you know nurses clinically um how can we get their their continuing professional development but look at it to be cost effective look at it to be uh, open and available to a wider kind of range of, of of people and 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 that kind of thing so i would say it was my practice development nurse role that enabled me to then step into to the job that i'm doing now um and and yeah and probably was responsible for that as well that, I think be... the the admin, the admin, the dreaded admin side <laughs> for nurses, I think, is seen as almost something to shy away from or that it's quite can be quite seen as quite a negative kind of aspect to a role. But how you've described it really does sum up the impacts that side of the role does have on yeah. nurses working on the shop floor, junior nurses, and especially looking at funding and funding of courses, the movement of courses into being in-house, kind of within a department, you don't go to an external, they're normally supported by a university sometimes, yeah. sometimes they're not, um, but it, it's a real change in nurse education and how and how those courses are run, especially for A&Es and intensive care units where nurses have to do quite clear um, and, and acute wards, and even within the, in fact, to be honest, every role, um, yeah 
yeah. everything now is based on a course isn't it Absolutely. um yeah. where previously it kind of used to be competencies that were signed off now that course and having that course then leads to great responsibility and being able to move up within different roles within those departments completely and i think that that you know it's not only about developing it to improve patient care it's it's about you as a nurse and your career as well and mm. and you know we go into nursing primarily because of the kind of people that we are we're about patients we're about looking after people um and uh, you know the current pressures though is that we need to know more to be able to mm. do that to an even higher standard the, you know we have much more responsibility as a nurse now um a, a prime example is you know when you qualify in a e if you're not learning to take bloods and cannulate a patient really really quickly um then you struggle to provide that that care that the individual needs um now the new curriculum we've we've highlighted that and new nmc standards have highlighted that as a as a skill that our students will be engaging with but back when i qualified it was definitely something that wasn't even looked at until Same. you registered as a nurse and, and for some people you know currently still working out there they, they they don't do it they don't need to do it mm. um so so yeah it was it was a case of what i looked at was what i knew about amy from the years of experience and what would be beneficial to to nurses you know what did they want to to learn on the shop floor what was going to provide better patient care what was going to enhance the targets that we were adhering to um so the development of in-house in courses and programs to 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 push that was something that i really enjoyed and was really exciting so yeah but you know admin as well in terms of i did the off duty for a couple of years um you brave I, man <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> um i would monitor you know get involved with performance management and and monitoring of sickness and and you have to I think that's one of the nice things about the new NMC standards and the awareness of, of our kind of student program containing elements of that now, because I think it is a big factor. And the more knowledge and understanding you have about it early on in your career, um, the the kind of the better the team dynamics come together, the the way that you know a unit can function regardless of where it is, rather than that's that's the band seven's role you know, and I don't really understand it. If you have an understanding of that component of nursing, albeit administrative and, and managerial, then um, it, it it only benefits everyone, really. You know, it's not just about, your, you know, yourself. So, so yeah, that, I, I think we overlook that sometimes. Yeah, we do. Um, so you've done a lot of courses. Um, you've done your mentorship, the a &E course, Mind, Illness and Injury, and your independent non-medical prescriber, and you're also an ALS instructor. Um, which was your favourite one? Which one did you enjoy the most? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I've been very, very fortunate. And um, yeah, most of the courses that I did um, were were funded by my, my organisation, um, and it was to do with how they wanted me to work and, and the services that I could give back to the department uh, and, uh, and in turn, obviously, share with colleagues as well. I would say it's difficult. In terms of the advanced nurse practitioning role, independent non-medical prescribing was probably the one that enabled you to practice more autonomously than any other um, you would be able to assess and and um, kind of diagnose manage patients but without that you then have to still seek the support of a, of a medical practitioner a doctor to then write up the prescription that they needed for discharge or or to you know to get them some analgesia sorted whilst you were continuing with their assessment etc so i'd say the one that um was the kind of changed the way i practice the most would probably be the ability to to prescribe um, it was also probably the, the most challenging of the courses. Uh, the one that I probably enjoy the most, the course I did, was actually the, the advanced life support instructor um, kind of experience. So, um, and, you know, doing the, the courses for that, the GIC course, and, and then teaching on uh, advanced life support courses or, or um, immediate life support courses in line with the resuscitation council guidance is it, they're really good they're, they're fantastic courses um you meet lots of people you teach with lots of wonderful varied you know disciplines and and every time i do one of those courses i still learn myself which is mm -hmm. fantastic so yeah and you're now a um, lecturer in the clinical skills department at Middlesex University how yeah. have you found moving into that role kind of away from being a hospital-based 
a practitioner and educator yeah to an academic um, environment so what was it it was just over three and a half years ago now I think um and I was petrified <laughs> um <laughs> I had done yeah I'd done kind of you know 10 plus years of just clinical kind of experience just clinical <laughs> <laughs> I, I only knew a hospital and I only yeah. knew a &E department and although I was delivering teaching and running these in-house courses it was in my education center in my hospital that yeah. I was in your comfort with. zone exactly and with staff that I knew and I worked alongside um so it was a huge leap of faith um, and I, I didn't know if I was going to enjoy it, but I got to the stage in my career where I really felt like I needed a new challenge. I was advised by lots of people that I was a, a good teacher. Um, I was a good kind of role model and that it would it would be something that suited me. So um, I, I listened to them and I decided to give it a go. Um, and since moving into kind of the lecturing role education uh, side of, of the nursing, uh, I've not looked back. Absolutely love it. Um, and yeah, and I'm really, really enjoying this this kind of new part of my my career, really. What advice do you have for any nurses that want to work in the emergency department, that want to move into that speciality or even start their career like you did as a newly qualified what would you tell them now? Yeah, so I guess um, I think one of the things with A and E is the the variety that you see, and there's this kind of age old saying of you know, kind of jack of all trades, master of none. Um, that to an extent does apply to an A and E nurse. You you never really get to focus and be a specialist on one particular thing because it's not all you see. You have to know lots and lots. And what I would always say to anyone that's starting uh, within that career is kind of, you know, get to grips with lots of things in, in small quantities. So it's, it's about um, learning a clinical condition, but don't go away and read everything that you need about it. Just go away so you've got the understanding that from an emergency point of view in that initial recognition and management, you know what to do for that, for that individual. Um, and then over time you learn more and more and that knowledge increases with those clinical conditions um so yeah i mean it, it's it's difficult to give one piece of advice really mm -hmm. i would always say that if you have a passion for emergency care and you really really enjoy enjoy kind of acute medicine um and and you like the variety of it then do not be put off by the fact that you feel too junior that you feel that you haven't got the knowledge because you learn it on the job you you your exposure to all of these patients every single day um there'll be a new case it'll be a new condition it'll be a new skill that you acquire and and you do learn it you you know it might feel really overwhelming but you will learn it the other thing to remember is that you're never by yourself in a &E. you're in a department which probably has one of the highest staffing levels on each shift that you ever experience you know you can be on duty with 15 20 other nurses of huge levels of experience um and we very much work as a team it's not an individual job there's always someone there um so if you're not sure there was always someone to turn to and, and to ask for advice and guidance and, and seek support from and that's a really really nice part of the job as well particularly when you're just stepping out of university and moving into your first role so um, yeah, I guess that's that's what I can share for now. <laughs> no, um, and where at the moment do you see your career going? I want to probably just continue to develop as an academic. I still I still would regard myself as very junior at the minute um, in comparison. And that's quite a shift, isn't it? Going from being so senior in your clinical role, um, and you feel yeah. really comfortable in anything that comes in, you can deal with, answer any question, you know where everything you know everything that's going on, and then you move to such a different environment, and you almost yeah. feel like you're back to square one again absolutely and I think that that was part of that huge you know why am I why am I wanting to start again yeah. I've worked so hard to get to where I am but but I wouldn't be able to do this job if it wasn't for my mm. you know years of experience and the opportunities that I had you know within working clinically in the NHS so um and now I'm I'm kind of halfway through or coming up you know, into the second year of being a, an associate program pathway leader, um, where I've got fantastic kind of support and mentorship from senior colleagues. So I'm learning parts of, of the the role as a, a lecturer that I, I didn't even have a 
clue existed when I first you know moved into to the career a few years ago so so I feel like I'm progressing really well um, I'm learning lots from loads of you know wonderfully experienced individuals from lots of different areas as well and that's a nice thing for 10 years I worked with A&E nurses um, and still do when I go back clinically whereas now I'm you know I'm with lots of different people from lots of different clinical backgrounds and and I'm learning from all of those as well. So you were so saying guess, you get stuck in in we were talking just before we started you get stuck like all your friends work in your clinical yeah. area the people that you that you see outside of kind of the academic environment we've all got the same work stories we've all got a similar sense of humor it's you kind of find your nursing group don't you do very much so yeah and, and then, actually yeah going into academia you get to then meet everyone else and kind of yeah. and see what it's like in all the other sides yeah really and, and and actually you appreciate as well kind of how specialist their roles are yeah because you do get yourself into a little bubble you know you, you you become very much focused on on what you know um and it's not until you share your experiences with other kind of you know very experienced nurses that you appreciate how expertise they are at their role as well um and and that's that's really enjoyable to to kind of learn from them um but yeah i i guess just continue continue to develop um i want to uh, i'm aiming to finish my master's this year um, so I'll have that qualification um, and then look at possibly doing a, a little bit of work, looking at maybe getting something published um, and and yeah, developing that part of my kind of career that I, I haven't began to establish yet so so go from there really i want to say thank you so much gareth for joining me today and thank you for answering all of my questions um, and good luck with your masters um, and we'll all be looking out for what you're going to publish soon thank thanks you so much. much thanks for having me cheers